And we are back with some more of youth and politics. Please remember, if you do have any comments and contributions, if you want to say something, make sure you talk to us on our social media platforms at Y254 channel on Twitter. The hashtag is Y in the morning. On Facebook, we're at Y254. On Instagram, we're at Y254 underscore channel. And on YouTube, in case you miss any of the valuable insight here, it's at Y254 channel. So with me in studio, we are well represented. We want to discuss the future of youth representation in Kenya. And with me in studio, I have John Mwegweru, who is going to be our political analyst of the day. I have Abi Chebet, who is the youth governor of Bomet County. And then I have himself, John Wangai, who comes here a lot, by the way, the youth senator of Laikipia. So before we get into the conversation, we'd like to talk about some of the trending topics here, especially because Laikipia is very well <coughs> represented. If you are following on Twitter, there's a hashtag going around called Justice for Mosetti. This is a Laikipia University student who was murdered or killed, rather, because of allegedly stealing equipment from the science and mathematics department. The, uh, the, the perpetrators of the crime is allegedly some security officers. And I'd like to hear from the youth senator of Laikipia County. What, is, what, is, what, what are you doing about this? Because I hear this is not the first time this has happened in this <coughs> university. So let's talk a bit about that, John. Well, uh, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, yesterday was a uh, very sad day for us. Mm -hmm. uh, a young man, a student at Laikipia University, by the name Mosati, mm -hmm. uh, was allegedly killed by the school authorities. Mm -hmm. This adds to another case of uh, extrajudicial killings mm -hmm. that have been happening in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, on the eve of Christmas, mm -hmm. we also saw a student at Kibera, a former Leeds University student, John Callington, mm -hmm. was shot dead again by the police. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, acts that we are condemning, mm -hmm. that the people who are supposed to guard us are the people who are, uh, are, are killing us. Mm -hmm. And actually, Immediately for me, I'm maddened to Laikipia. We have a very big demonstration. Mm -hmm. And we want uh, to petition IPOA mm -hmm. to get the people who are uh, concerned with the killing of the student so that they can be brought to book mm -hmm. to serve as a punitive uh, example to the rest. Mm -hmm. And again, also on Wednesday, we will have a big demonstration here in Nairobi mm -hmm. uh, led by the UN chairman, Manyara, mm -hmm. to demonstrate on the death of the Linz University uh, student mm -hmm. was shot dead by the police mm -hmm. and one the police uh, of continuing killing students and other innocent youth because mm -hmm. we are the future of this country. Mm -hmm. But the people who are guaranteed to uh, maintain law and order, mm -hmm. they're the same people who are operating the same law and order mm -hmm. and they, they are continuing enjoying the freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, the Constitution is clear that mm -hmm. Article 26, that everyone has the right to life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Abby, do you want to weigh in on the topic? Yeah, indeed. Uh, concerning the situation about the Laikipia student, mm -hmm. it's so wrong to take action by your own hands. This could have been taken uh, by, the, by, by a law of action mm -hmm. in the courts and a better ruling would have been done for the situation. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have lost, as, lost a student who would come back to the society and change uh, the situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. John, you seem to be on the other side of town when it comes to this particular topic. So let's just hear. Uh, <coughs> one thing, mm -hmm. I have uh, a very wide integration with the, the, the authorities department. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to challenge uh, our youths. I'm a youth too. Mm -hmm. When we are addressing insecurity, mm -hmm. when we are addressing uh, police brutality, mm -hmm. when we are addressing extrajudicial killings, mm -hmm. there are some factors that we need to lay down. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one factor that is consistently ignored, mm -hmm. that this student was stealing. Mm -hmm. So this student was not straight. He was not walking home. He was not running on his errands. Mm -hmm. He was a thief. Mm -hmm. I would I would I wouldn't really support the taking of life mm -hmm. neither would I support the extrajudicial killings mm -hmm. but I think that we need to respect the law mm -hmm. and we need to uphold it mm -hmm. when it comes to the police extrajudicial killings and uh, when it comes to the police brutality mm -hmm. the police go to colleges mm -hmm. The police are taught. In fact, the one of the key statements that uh, the National Police Service is very keen on is the cohesive integration of the people and the, the society and the police service. Mm -hmm. So it is out of sheer arrogance that you will find a police officer uh, maiming or either harming an innocent person. Mm -hmm. That one I wouldn't agree to. Mm -hmm. But when you are addressing the issues of somebody who was a culprit of a certain act mm -hmm. that is not in law, mm 
Mm -hmm. Then there are some so many factors that are needed to be concerned. Well, so you subscribe to the school of thought that the wages of sin is death. <laughs> All right, interesting. So let's move away from that topic. I think uh, we look forward to your demonstrations. We'll be, we'll be with you. We want to see what the, like, if you're, uh, what the students are going to do. And yes, we will be paying attention. We'll be following you and next Monday maybe we'll talk about the results, some of the results that you've been able to achieve afterwards. Okay, speaking now of the future of the youth when it comes to representation, what's the plan? Here we have the Youth Senate Kenya and the Youth, Govern the youth Governors Kenya. What's the plan this year? What changes are you guys planning to make when it comes to 2019? What's the plan? What are the motions that you guys are forwarding for this particular, even if it's the first uh, semester, is it, what do we call it, trimester of the year, the mm. first trimester of the year? Yes, what's the plan? What do you guys plan to because even Nigerians, their ministry of youth is actually led by someone who's 54, not youth. And here in Kenya, we are facing the same issues. So what are some of the agendas you guys have for us? Abby? Uh, in Kenya, the, the general population, the most people in Kenya are below 35 years of age. That's actually the majority. Mm -hmm. And what the youth need to realize is that as the majority, we have that say. We can be able to voice out and we can be able to go for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Most of us tend to realize that uh, we have these opportunities at hand, but we don't go for them. Mm -hmm. uh, this year for the Youth Governors Kenya, we're reaching out more to the young people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to create more platforms for them to be able to enlighten them mm -hmm. on what is expected for them and the opportunities that they have for this year. Mm -hmm. 2019 is still new. We mm -hmm. still have to reap a, a lot uh, throughout the year so that at the end of it, we'll mm -hmm. bring uh, to the table what we can see as so, is so fruitful for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, John. <coughs> well, uh, for the Youth Senate Kenya, for the people, for our viewers back at home, those who don't know the Youth Senate Kenya, it's a, <coughs> a national youth-led uh, organization. Actually, the third biggest organization after the National Youth Service and the National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. Our president is Honorable Gideon Ketel, the current nominated MP representing youths. And this year, our, <coughs> our plan is based on four agendas. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> number one of the agenda is uh, employment. Mm -hmm. Number two, we have uh, education, we have peace, and we have uh, good health for everyone. Mm -hmm. Whereby in employment, uh, uh, if I can remind the viewers, mm -hmm. the Public Procurement and Disposal Act, mm -hmm. we are the people who lobbied so that it can be enacted, mm -hmm. and uh, to give youths 30% uh, tenders and contracts for the uh, government <coughs> uh, tenders and contracts. Mm -hmm. And this year, what we want to do is pass another bill whereby we want to create more avenues for employment mm -hmm. not limited to but including uh, scrapping of the retirement age from the current 60 to around 50 to 55 so to allow you know the the stat according to statistics wait you want to reduce it from 60 to 55 goodness yeah. gracious so me. that now the people according mm -hmm. to statistics they mm -hmm. say that the the if uh, uh, called <coughs> the if I cannot remember, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> the years that the, the scientists look that Kenya people can live, mm. ages to sixty three. Life expectancy. Yeah, yeah, life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Sixty three to sixty seven. Mm -hmm. So telling someone to retire at sixty, he only have three more years to live, <laughs> but you have to look at the grandchildren. So mm -hmm. we want uh, to pass that bill so that people can retire at fifty to fifty five. And give other youth more jobs so that, uh, as per now, uh, the Ministry of uh, Planning has a big problem. Because mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of retirees mm -hmm. who are retiring from big positions mm -hmm. where they haven't mentored the youth. So mm -hmm. they are leaving back a, a, a big vacuum. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we want to, to avoid going in the future. Mm -hmm. We also want to ask the government to introduce job shifts mm -hmm. in these small, small jobs so that mm -hmm. many people can be employed. And many, many, including tenders and contracts, should be uh, increased from 30% mm -hmm. to around 50%. Mm -hmm. The loans should be given without securities. And then on education, we are uh, <coughs> working on getting more money for bursaries, mm -hmm. scholarships, and mm -hmm. other grants. Mm -hmm. On good health, uh, last year, a lot of, a lot of in the dailies, mm -hmm. we, there was a lot of reported cases of youth having a lot of cases of 
HIV AIDS and other health issues mm -hmm. that is something that you want to address going forward because we have a vision vision 2030 mm -hmm. we have the Africa agenda 2063 mm -hmm. and we youths are the pillars of these uh, agendas mm -hmm. and we cannot achieve them when we are sick mm. so <coughs> these are some of the things that we are looking forward and we are hoping that by the graces of God we shall be able to achieve them all right, Youth Senate Kenya, well said, John Wangai. However, John here has a dispute. He has a quarrel to pick with YGK and YSK. Let us know. No, uh, I would like I would like to challenge the these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I take respect that they are my fellow youths, mm -hmm. and they are really aspiring in leadership. Mm -hmm. But I have a challenge. When uh, <coughs> previously I was here. Mm -hmm. I told you that uh, for a nation to grow, there are three things that are very key to growing the economy. Mm -hmm. Number one, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Number two, youth. Mm -hmm. And number three, accountability. Mm -hmm. Now, out of this, the only one agenda that have been outlined by the Youth Governors Kenya mm -hmm. and the Youth Senate mm -hmm. is only one agenda. Mm -hmm. That is the youth. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard about civic education. Well, well, the youth senate has talked about health. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is all coming under one platform mm -hmm. that it is the concern of the youth. Mm, okay. Now we, uh, we we need to hear about civic education. Mm -hmm. We need to hear about the government accounting mm -hmm. to what they are utilizing, mm -hmm. the loans that we are taking from China and everywhere, mm -hmm. the monies that we are collecting from other Kenyans and really holding them hostage to the tax system. Mm -hmm. What are we seeing that money do? Mm -hmm. Where is the the accountability? Mm -hmm. That is what we are really trying as as a personal uh, and. Uh, a, a, a really free advocator. Mm -hmm. We are really fighting for accountability in our counties mm -hmm. and in our governments. Mm -hmm. You found that some data are locked. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. knock into offices, you're chased away. You go into websites, there is nothing to show. Mm -hmm. So that is one clarion call that I'd like to really push the youth. Mm -hmm. That we need, as much as we are trying to devolve development, we need mm -hmm. to devolve accountability mm -hmm. and we need to really have a very good system of civic education mm -hmm. and that is a challenge i'd like to give to igk mm -hmm. that is a challenge i'd like to give to youth senate mm -hmm. that is a challenge i'd like to give to any youth group that is within the nation mm -hmm. We need to educate our people mm -hmm. that there is a budget system. Mm -hmm. We need to educate the people that there is a public participation. Mm -hmm. We need to educate the people that they have to account for every development project that is done in their area. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys who come and tell them, uh, do you know this must is supposed to cost three million? Mm -hmm. They tell you, what is a must? Mm -hmm. We even don't know what is coming here. Mm -hmm. Then how do you tell such a people that their government is working for them? Okay. Good point. Good <coughs> point. All right, let's talk about, um, now that we want to discuss representation, I'd like to understand, in light of the 2022 uh, succession politics that we are seeing, we are seeing shifting alliances, a whole different, uh, it's, it's almost unpredictable. I'd like to understand what preparations you guys have made when it comes to 2022. Are we going to see many of you uh, represented in the ballot, even for presidential candidates? We've seen the youths all over Africa, not only in Kenya, complaining that even the youths who vie, because even the in DRC Congo, they the youngest candidate to vie was 37 and he never even made it to the final list in nigeria they had the same issue they don't have any young people who can make it to the top when it comes to presidential um, um candidacy and i'd just like to understand from from the youth senate and the youth governors of kenya what are you guys doing in preparation for 2022 we've seen bonnie kalwale and his problems but i think we'll talk about him just after this but i'd like to understand what you guys are doing when it comes to 2022 are we going to see any of you there <coughs> well uh just uh, to 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 answer my brother here mm -hmm. about <laughs> youth senate, <laughs> mm, youth mm -hmm. senate and youth governors, mm -hmm. uh, we are youth organisations, non-governmental youth organisations. Well, as much as I, I applaud the good work that you are doing, I think there is also a distinction between civil societies and the youth organisations. We are not a civil society, and you, uh, we cannot do works which are meant for the civil society. It's it's the work of the civil society to. To, to <coughs> enlighten the citizens on what they should be doing. But well, that's a good point. We can look on that. On 2022, as uh, Youth Senate, what we are doing, we are trying to give many youths a platform mm -hmm. so that they can be able to rise and also see themselves as potential readers. Mm -hmm. Well, they say that um, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Mm -hmm. And 
<coughs> we have seen most of these big leaders starting from somewhere mm -hmm. and we have started to uplift some of these leaders giving them posts in their rural areas mm -hmm. so that they can nourish and become big people in the future mm -hmm. again also uh, we are trying as youth in it to mm -hmm. create an enabling environment mm -hmm. by empowering the youth because mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. you see now there's that big gap between the rich and the poor mm -hmm. while Kenyan campaigns you should uh, you should have a lot of money and yes, that is something yes. that most of the youth in this country doesn't mm. have mm. so these are something that we are looking on so that we can have empowered youths mm. now facing now the the people who have been government who have been rooting for mm. a while and i see that i see there's a future for kenya and in 2022 mm -hmm. i see there will be many youths in the starting with the county assembly mm -hmm. like uh, we, we had a meeting with the members of parliament from gambia mm -hmm. and i was impressed because mm -hmm. like 70 percent of the members of the county assemblies are in youth. gambia yeah yeah uh -huh. they are youths in wow. the pa parliament it's 50 50 percent the 50 percent are youths mm -hmm. and now the other 50 percent are the old so i think in 2022 these are things that we should be looking upon mm -hmm. and i urge all the young parliamentarians mm -hmm. not to forsake their fellow youths to come Mm -hmm. and give back to the community to try to uplift someone mm -hmm. and god will bless them perhaps you should also let us know some of these campaign alternatives because the issue the the, the big challenge they mm -hmm. say that they can't participate is money like you said they don't have any money however before you tell us this alternative uh, methods of campaign i'd like to understand from abby let's talk a little bit do you have any response to what john said about you guys just thinking about youth and not, nothing else um uh, by empowering the youth and mm -hmm. getting to the youth, it's mm -hmm. going to open uh, like eyes for other people mm -hmm. so they get to realize the problems that they face. When we come and deal with the health mm -hmm. for the youth, it's also going to be like an advantage to the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's going to, be, to have covered the rest of the community. Uh, and about the Youth Governors Kenya, Youth Governors Kenya comprises of, um, we have the Youth Governors President, we have the Youth Governor Secretariat, we have 47 Youth Governors, we have our uh, Deputy Youth Governors, we have constituency representatives and the ward representatives. Uh, it's an, uh, being an unpartisan organization, we try to bring on board and partner with other youth groups in the different counties, mm -hmm. in the different wards and constituencies. Uh, we get to... Uh, air our views in a way that uh, we are informing the people about the problems that we have and so coming to the 20 to 22 elections we are going to uh, having uh, opened the eyes of the young people who are outside there they're going to know the kind of things that they want the leaders want the seats uh, are going to deal with them so mm -hmm. they're going to look at their manifestos and see whether these things are already catered for in their ma manifestos or not mm -hmm. yeah okay Abby, i have not finished with you just yet uh, john, oh, john you want to respond okay mm -hmm. <laughs> now, <coughs> one, let me let me let me let me let me put this across. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that that is a statement <laughs> that really hit my mind when uh, Honorable John here was talking about. Uh, oh, he <laughs> yes, he is the senator, <laughs> like him here. So he is he is an honourable member. Mm -hmm. When he was talking about the youth mm -hmm. and the politics mm -hmm. uh we have to appreciate and uh, i'm i'm really glad that i got to watch your show way ahead before mm -hmm. we came here mm -hmm. and uh, there was a there was a there was a nigerian youth mm -hmm. who was talking about nominations mm -hmm. and endorsements mm -hmm. the same political system they have in nigeria is the same political system with ha we have here in kenya mm -hmm. but here is the challenge we are talking about political demographics. Mm -hmm. We are talking about political shapings of the youth. Mm -hmm. But rather, are we tackling the political system? Are we challenging our political system? Mm -hmm. We've seen, I'll, I'll give an example of like here. Mm -hmm. We've seen the governor there come from uh, an independent party. Mm -hmm. That means he's just a candidate with no party, with no endorsements, with no cash. He has no defeated the system. And he has defeated the system. Oh. What is your thoughts? Mm -hmm. as we are trying to maneuver around the political demographics mm -hmm. about challenging the system of endorsements mm -hmm. about really changing or challenging the system of boot leaking and mm -hmm. sorry to use that word because <laughs> it's the reality of things mm -hmm. whereby you just have to say yes kiongozi mm -hmm. you send somewhere yes kiongozi mm -hmm. and you don't have to really air your views you mm -hmm. just have to be a partisan of that party for you to be elected mm. when 
do the youth stand up and challenge this system? Mm -hmm. That is what we are really preaching around Laikipia and mm -hmm. all over the ground. Mm -hmm. That people need to see ideologies. Mm -hmm. People need to see development. People need to see the civic duties mm -hmm. for them to elect a person. We don't have to, and uh, I'll have to use this since mm -hmm. it is all over. We don't have to be Thurakus. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be Kumera Kumera. <laughs> we don't have to be Nasa Hau. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, to, to conform mm -hmm. into that political agendalization of things. Mm -hmm. We need to really come up with a system mm -hmm. whereby a youth, mm -hmm. despite not having money, yes. despite not having finances, those alternative methods of yes, campaigning, yes. can stand up and decide, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yes, guys, I'm very fit for this. Mm -hmm. I can lead you into this. I mm -hmm. can do ABCD. I'm very accountable in my jobs. Very I good. can stand up in and fight for the stop right there. I'm glad that you brought up the, the, the Ushedzi conversation. Now, young leaders uh, you have been accused of being easily compromised because you are broke so we'd like to understand from you guys what are you guys doing when it comes to accountability and integrity can, are you guys bribable you know they can just bribe you guys you know you guys can be but after all you're broke you know even the president once stood up and told us that mm. we are even bigger thieves than them so we'd like to understand from you in terms of accountability thank you so much for bringing that up john <laughs> Well. Abby? <laughs> Let me start with Abby. Okay, uh, about the Ushenzu thing, thinking, mm -hmm. uh, taking the less amount, the little amount that we're given, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot be able to see the future like, now we have like 10 years down the line, mm -hmm. what is going to, what is my future going to be like? When mm -hmm. I take this little amount, mm -hmm. that's going to take me for today, what about tomorrow? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. This is more of actually arrogance for mm -hmm. the young people mm -hmm. and the people who are involved in this, mm -hmm. because they need to get to realize that despite the fact that we're alive today, you have to be alive tomorrow, mm -hmm. and you have to give back to your country tomorrow and the next year after then. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a uh, enlightening people that you need to find a better solution to things mm -hmm. you don't need to get like fast solutions that are going to uh, come to an end before mm -hmm. you get uh, to the very end mm -hmm. you need to get a solution that's going to be long lasting and that's going to bring back to you and you're going to see its benefits later so we can trust YGK hmm. all right let's mm -hmm. talk to the Senate <laughs> well uh, <coughs> being honest mm -hmm. they say that desperate moments force for desperate actions mm -hmm. well like now most of the youth are not empowered mm -hmm. And when you are given something, honestly, you cannot refuse because you <laughs> you are up <laughs> sleeping hungry. <laughs> let us face the situation as mm -hmm. uh, as as real as it is. Mm -hmm. That is what that is why we as youth senate we want to first empower the youth, let them get something, get an income, mm -hmm. and from there now we can start teaching them, and co uh, our concurrently mm -hmm. teaching them more of ethics mm -hmm. and. Uh, and other, uh, other, uh, other, other good behaviors. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I would like the members of parliament to do mm -hmm. is to write a bill on financial, on the campaign funds. Yes. That one should be regulated. Very mm. true. There's unfair. There's an unfair advantage, mm. which is cl which is closing the door for a lot of youth. Okay. However, let me uh, let me talk to you, Abi Kidogo. There's this bill that's pending, which is uh, yet to be to be to be to be set in Parliament. I think on February 19th, as per Edendwale. Uh, this is the gender bill, and I'd like to understand from you. People have postponed these things from time immemorial, and it's just about the same time Nigeria will be having its election. So I don't know where the attention will be during that particular time. But I'd like to understand from you. What do you think? Are we finally going to put this thing to rest uh not exactly mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to give people like free opportunities every now and then mm -hmm. sometimes we, we need to let people to go for the opportunities and they need to struggle for them mm -hmm. so giving them at hand it's mm -hmm. going to make like the coming generation to lose that energy mm -hmm. that they could channel it and go for these opportunities themselves so getting like an extra positions or something it's not going to be a lasting solution mm -hmm. and plus these funds that we will uh, use to get these people that we'll use to i mean make this bill successful could have been used to raise the other parts of the uh the other like the infrastructure oh. other stuff that could have been used uh -huh. to develop our country so it's actually more of priorities i don't think that was uh, like the best thing to go for wow okay john let's hear your response i didn't expect that Abby, <laughs> <laughs> okay let me hear your response john no <coughs> uh due to my manners mm -hmm. i wouldn't really kneel down to her Mm -hmm. But she really spoke like the queen. Where? Uh -huh. <laughs> she really stated things as they are. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I usually like to put across. Mm -hmm. We don't have to endorse women mm -hmm. to empower them. Mm -hmm. 
we need to raise challenges to them mm -hmm. so that they can take on the challenges and become conquerors. Mm -hmm. We don't need to free ride them into positions. Right now, we are struggling with a very, very big recurrent expenditure mm -hmm. from both our counties mm -hmm. <coughs> to our national government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've had people being nominated mm -hmm. every now and then into mm -hmm. seats, and mm -hmm. they are not really doing capable of doing, of, of doing the same. Mm. Now, when we talk about the gender bill, mm -hmm. we are supposed to address issues about youths, mm -hmm. but not rather issues about women. Mm. Because one thing, if you empower a woman, mm -hmm. You empower them through challenges. If you empower a man, you empower them through challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about the youth, mm -hmm. we are supposed to discuss about representation of the youth, mm -hmm. but rather not about representation of the women. Mm -hmm. We have women in our parliaments. Mm -hmm. We have women in our departments. We have women even in our local areas. Mm -hmm. Those people are empowered. Mm -hmm. We have even more women who are learned. Mm -hmm. Those are the people to mentor other women. So for you, this bill is neither here nor there. It's not a matter of urgency. As I usually state, mm. it is just a poli political gimmick. Okay, jo John, 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 John. Mm. I cannot conclude this segment without hearing what you have to say. I know you have a comeback. There you have yeah. sat in that seat, in that position. I know you have some response. So to end the case. <laughs> yes, uh, on the wage bill, you see, now the law is the law. And the constitution states that two dance gender there should be no more than a party of two dance gender in any of the houses mm -hmm. or any of the uh, uh, of the government uh, praise. Mm -hmm. Well, the bill, after the parliament failed to pass due to quorum hitches, mm -hmm. I and Stephen, we petitioned uh, Maraga to dissolve the parliament. Mm -hmm. And now, after, uh, after like two weeks, we went back to him mm -hmm. and asked him, Maraga, why have you not dissolved parliament? Mm -hmm. Well, he laughed at us and told us that uh, I just nullify in the election, so we, ca uh, we cannot go back to another election because immediately they dissolve parliament. Oh. <laughs> we are going back to an another election. Oh no! But now the constitution is a constitution, it, it, it must be mm -hmm. followed. And again, we have seen the members who have been nominated, the li uh, women uh, who have been nominated. Mm -hmm. They have come back to be superheroes, super women. Mm -hmm. we, we have seen them. We mm -hmm. have seen even uh, back in Laikipia, uh, mm -hmm. the women rep who is giving people now headaches here. Catherine, <laughs> she was a nominated MCA. Now she is a women lep, a very strong person in this country. Uh -huh. I think that's the best way to empower women, yes. giving them a chance to serve. Mm -hmm. And that is how now we will be able to achieve Vision 2030 and mm -hmm. Agenda 2063 of Africa, mm -hmm. bringing all the parties together so that no party should feel is uh, uh, discriminated. Yes. Yeah, something like that. So nobody's felt le so nobody's yeah. left out, including sure. their fifth mm. for the disabled persons. However, you guys, I think it's about time we conclude this segment. So I just need a few parting shots real quick, then we can go. John? Uh, <coughs> number one, I'd, uh, I'd like to challenge Mr. Wangai before I finish. Mm -hmm. Allow me just 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. When you talk about free riding women, mm -hmm. it's we not free riding. It is free riding. <laughs> Ask me why. <laughs> Ask right, me why. All right, all right, it is a very controversial statement, uh -huh. but very right. Mm -hmm. We are just free riding them. Mm -hmm. You can't just tell me that you're giving a woman without a role mm -hmm. to go into assembly and legislate. Mm -hmm. In fact, if we need to do the two thirds, mm -hmm. we should really tell these women, you need to come to the ground, mm -hmm. you need to access the youths, mm -hmm. you need to access the people, mm -hmm. vie for the seats. And that is what I told you about challenging the political system. Mm -hmm. It is not about free riding people. Mm -hmm. We need to change our systems mm -hmm. indefinitely. All right, all right, okay. Now, okay. on the other on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to really thank the Laikipia counterparts, mm -hmm. and I would really like to thank the Laikipia people. Mm -hmm. We've really been on ground. Mm -hmm. We are li we are really listening to people, mm -hmm. and people are calling out accountability. Mm -hmm. People are calling out civic duties and civic education. Mm -hmm. I would also like to urge all the YGK members and the Youth Senate. Mm -hmm. Please do not disembark your roles as civic educators. Anytime you're a leader, mm -hmm. you're a civic educator, mm -hmm. and you're a civic, you have a civic duty to empower your people. That is the number one rule that you should have as a leader. Because why are you leading people? All right, okay. Now, on the second note, mm -hmm. I would like to point out that in Laikipia, mm -hmm. we are having a proposal mm -hmm. whereby we have uh, an equitable uh, and equitability bill, mm -hmm. whereby we are really challenging the county 
to reach out devolution and uh, distribution mm -hmm. of resources to the sublocations okay and ensure that any sublocation in each year mm -hmm. gets to benefit from the annual budget All right. as we are moving forward to that i really think that we'll engage the people and also the youth senate is invited to okay. come and learn about the same as we All go right. forward let us really maintain peace uh -huh. and be really good youth advocators. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much, John. Abby, quick, quickly, quick. Uh, as uh, the YGK, the Youth Senate, and all other youth groups, mm -hmm. um, it's just a reminder that it's about time we leave the urban areas because most of the people have, ge have not generated more energy to ah, the urban area and okay. deal with the rural areas for everyone to be brought on board mm -hmm. and to share their ideas. Yeah. Great. <coughs> Okay, for me, uh, it's just uh, a call to all the readers. Uh, let's stop uh, more of politicking. Mm -hmm. 2022 is far. Mm -hmm. Let's first work and deliver our manifestos mm -hmm. and make uh, this Kenya a better place for us. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Joy, for reiterating to John that the law is the law. There's no free riding. We're doing that. All right. Okay, anyway, you've been watching Youth and Politics. Uh, make sure you do stay tuned for Man Crush Monday. I'm seeing a couple of your posts on Facebook. I'm seeing Talia Wizop, of course, banner to continue with Life Cycle. I can see Cynthia Morgan, Coma Rock Tuned. Thank you very much. I can see Karaoke Wagatanga Nagara, Gatanga watching. And uh, someone is watching from Bamburi, Mombasa. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Hilda Wadidi. You have been watching Youth and Politics with myself and Joy Mochache. Make sure you do catch up with us on this particular segment every Mondays between 8 and 9 o'clock. Please do stand by for one Kalamiva.